Hello everyone, I am the Lore Explorer and this is Outer Wild. Today, we are going to talk about something I've touched upon in other videos, but I never really dedicated time to discuss the issue. Even in-game characters debate this, so I'm not exactly sure what took me so long to talk about it, other than how complicated it is. So today, we will be asking the question, are we the same Harthian every time we wake up at the campfire? In other words, is sending our memories back in time the same thing as sending ourselves back in time? Honestly, I do understand why the widely accepted answer is yes, because from our perspective, that's exactly what we see. We wake up, we venture out, die, and then we wake up in the exact same place we did before, as if it were all just a dream and nothing happened. Plus, the Nomai thought the same thing. They'd say things like, well, we can just shut down the ATP after we find the coordinates. So they clearly felt that even if it were a copy or something, it's effectively the same thing. And again, from their perspective, that may be true, especially since they'd only experienced death once and in a predetermined way, the supernova. But in this video, we're going to take a look at this philosophically, but more importantly, from a third party's perspective, such as the eye of the universe, which I have chose for a reason. Imagine just living your life. Tomorrow is your first solo launch in your spaceship, so you spent most of the day impressing Micah with the RC ship. We head down to the campfire to sleep, and everything is normal. Yet, when you wake up, you remember ramming into a comet, going a bit faster than you thought you were. Eh, no big deal. Pre-flight nerves. You're super cautious for the next five Harthian days. And still, the sun blows up and devours your entire solar system. You wake up at home again and try to tell your friends. You plead with them to believe you. Hornfels, how this statue is so weird. It's taking all my memories and I keep dying. Wait, no, you guys are dying too. The sun is going to explode in five days. We have to do something. You'd likely just have your spaceship keys taken from you due to insanity. But joke's on them. You'll get them back in five days anyway. Now, even if it's not that dramatic, I personally believe the very basis of the idea to be life-changing. You'd obviously have different beliefs, feelings, and outlook on life, all of it, all of it different. And to drive this point home, depending on how we die, we wake up in different states of panic. So, from the very second we wake up, different. That's just sort of my semantic point. Maybe a better title of this video would be my views on the overarching structure of the Outer Wilds universe, or rather, multiverse, depending on whether you're a puny being or an omnipresent, all-encompassing quantum object entangled with a puny being. There are a few things about the structure of the universe we are just shown. One of those things is the eye of the universe, the source of all quantum uncertainty. At this particular location, time has no meaning, and we know the eye of the universe exists in at least three universes. Ours, the one before ours, and the one after. It's likely this is actually an infinite amount of universes, but it's easier to just imagine with the three of them. So, from the eye's perspective, where time has no meaning, all of this is happening at the same time. If we want to make a static image, we can look at the eye as the center, and then we'd have the three universes around it, all simultaneously in existence. So to describe it simply, from the eye's perspective, we have a quantum multiverse. Another thing we are shown about the structure of the universe is they are actually connected by the eye. If we are at the eye's planet, and we shoot our little scout into the eye, it ends up in the next universe, 14.3 billion years later, still puttering along as if it were built yesterday. From our initial perspective, it just disappeared. But of course, from the eye's perspective, it got transported from our universe to the next. So hopefully by now, you guys realize why I want to look at the black hole duplication phenomenon through the viewpoint of the eye. From our viewpoint, it seems like time travel, no question. Go to the HEL, shoot something into the black hole, it exits the connected white hole milliseconds before. But I believe if we account for the structure of the universe, there is a more likely explanation of what's happening here. Let's do a thought experiment of what this might look like from the eye. So we are at the HEL in our universe. Self is also at the HEL, in their universe. You're both experimenting, essentially shooting your probes back and forth, milliseconds apart. The eye is keeping an eye on things, 
And notice those objects aren't quantum. They can only exist in one location in time and space. It also knows what your future should be, since it's happening all at once through the eye. It should be an even trade of pros. No big deal. Both universes can move on. But if we go ahead and remove the warp core, we create a problem. From our perspective, we now have two probes. Space-time shatters because nothing caused it to appear in the first place. But to the eye of the universe, our universe has two probes, while Self's universe has zero. So the eye watches in horror as space-time begins to stretch and wobble. Eventually, it tears, trying to open a path in space-time to return the object to its correct location. Self's universe also likely gets consumed in this as well. Like I said, the initial argument was cause and effect being ignored is what caused space-time to be destroyed. And from our perspective, it sort of makes sense. The Nomai hand wave it by saying cause and effect must be a little bit different than they thought, and that we understand. And again, it sort of makes sense when the time interval was only a millisecond. But from here, we can go even further. Forget the HEL when it's millisecond interval. Let's head to the ATP for its 22 minute interval. If we jump into the black hole there, from our perspective, we get sent back in time to where we were 22 minutes prior. It's the exact same result as sending our memories back. Aha! This proves it. The Nomai were right. Sending our memories back in time is essentially sending ourselves back in time. But if that's the case, then how do you explain this? No, but in all seriousness, it makes no sense. We aren't a quantum being. We can only exist in one point in time and space, and we're standing right here, not there. Let's take a look at this again though, from the eye's perspective. We wake up in the village near the campfire. We head to the ATP and wait inside until the black hole core activates. We jump into the ATP and it sends us through to another universe, 22 minutes in the past. This universe already has a version of us there. This completely separate version of us just waking up at the campfire at the same time that we got sent through. This is what actually causes the duplication. So to us, it would just seem like a copy. The universe hasn't exploded yet, so it can't be cause and effect that's the issue here. The issue is at least from the eye and time's perspective, our original universe no longer has an us, and this other universe now has two of us. But the eye knows not all hope is lost. There is still one more natural path through time and space for this to be reverted. As long as the extra leaves the universe through the black hole, nothing is left in time and space where it shouldn't be. But if we don't jump into the black hole to travel that natural path through time and space, time and space shatters trying to open that path back up where it shouldn't be. So to state it simply, it's not only time travel from our perspective, it's also dimensional travel from the eye's perspective. Rather than cause and effect causing problems every time we use a black hole, what breaks space-time is an object being where it's not supposed to be in space-time and having no natural way back to its correct location. So after going through all of that, I understand it's simple to just say, dude, that's way too convoluted. It's simpler to just say, we get sent back in time. You're thinking way too much about this. And yeah, that may be true. I feel like I'm trying to be the doctor. Really, from a non-subjective viewpoint, it's more like a big ball of timey-wimey stuff. But honestly, all of these things we are shown about the universe, it makes more sense to judge things by how the eye of the universe would see them. The more I think about it, the more meaning I see in the name the Doves chose for the eye. Plus, once I started looking at things from this perspective, the game made more sense to me. The Nomai were right. They could have shut down the ATP no problem. Space-time wouldn't shatter since there would be no thing in space-time looking for a path to where it needs to be. The coordinates already existed before the time loop. The Nomai just didn't know them. Just as the ones and zeros that make up a future program on the internet already exist within our computers right now. I also want to address something I've said in the past because it falls under the same vein of logic. Trying to make the argument that the eye of the universe had sentience I said something along the lines of, the eye chose the exact right time to start the time loop. Now I see why that's confusing. It's poorly worded, and it should have been elaborated on. So let's look at this from the eye's perspective. 
it wouldn't be looking at when to start the 9,318,054 loop. That was up to the Nomai. The eye would be looking at when to reveal itself to the ATP so the correct being is where it needed to be. If we look at how the ATP and statues work, whoever is closest to the statue would be caught in the loop, memories intact. Our friend Hal was standing next to the statue just before us. Since they didn't sync with it, we know the statue wasn't active as Hal stood next to it. The probe hadn't found the eye yet. Still, moments later, right after we get our launch codes, the statue does activate and syncs with us when we are alone. So obviously, the probe found the eye right as we were talking to Hornfels. The probe sent the coordinates to the ATP, activating the statues. So now, again, with context, the eye chose the exact moment it needed to, to initiate the loop from our perspective as the player character. This is obviously important so we can figure out the mystery, but I feel like that statement shouldn't have been condensed to one sentence, and hopefully now it makes sense that I've elaborated on it. I'm not sure how many people I'll actually convince with this video. A new Harthian from another universe each time we wake up? That means we really die each time. Our universe is doomed in all but the last loop. It's much too cynical. Most people are probably more willing to accept things at face value, but as I started studying the universe of Outer Wilds, it became clear to me, just like our universe, there is more than this universe than meets the eye. And that explains why it doesn't really appeal to most people's standard five senses. Or maybe I'm just an insane dude looking way too into things. But for now, this is Lore Explorer going to continue to look way too deep into things and share it with you guys so you don't have to. So I hope you guys really enjoyed the video, and even if you didn't agree with me, you got a good look in how deep the Lore Explorer actually delves into things. So thanks for everybody for watching, and if you want to be sure to keep up with my other videos, make sure to subscribe and hit the bell to be notified when a video comes out. Or you can join the Lore Explorer Discord, which you can find in the description below and I update manually as each video comes out.